Well, hi there, this is DBT, and this is just a video to show you some of the options and the things you might want to know about QC Doom Edition. Um, the very first thing, though, is that, as you might be able to notice by now, the name of the mod is actually different. It's no longer Quick Champions Doom Edition. Instead, now it's just QC Doom Edition. The reason for that is that we wanted to avoid avoid any confusion between the actual Quake Champions game and the, and the mod for Doom that it was called Quake Champions Doom Edition. So instead it's just QC Doom Edition and it retains the same abbreviation as always, QCDE. So there is that. From now on, that this is the new logo and the new name that you will be seeing. Alright. Now, before I go into actually the options and the things about QC Doom Edition, there's one thing that I think it's valuable for people, particularly people that are not used or the, um, to this engine or Z Doom or GC Doom or Sandronum, which are, are basically the same engine, um, and that is the mouse options. Um, by default, the mouse is a little weird in in, in Sandronum or GC Doom. Um, it's it's a little weird. The vertical movement and the and the horizontal movement it's it's not one to one. So if you want to have it the closest to I don't know what a, a, a Quake game has it, you just go to all options, go to mouse option, prescale mouse movement, turn it off, which is basically like uh, mouse speed, turning speed and mouse look speed. Um, mouse look speed put it to 0 0.5. And that way they both will be around the same when you look up and when you look sideways. Alright, that's the, the, the very first thing that I think it's very important for people that didn't know about this. Now let's look into the options. Um, well, the very first thing that we'll, we'll, we'll look after the mouse, of course, which will technically be the second thing, um, it's how to start a game with, with, ch with champions. Now this engine doesn't actually have a, a fancy way of selecting champions and a whole big menu for it. And, no, it's very simple. Um, you just go to new game and there it is, it shows you which class you want to choose. At this point you cannot see pictures of the class nor any specification about them. Um, there's other ways to check that, but for now let's just pick whichever. Let's go with Bitterman. It has a lot of skills, which is basically normal, hard skills, a very very difficult skill and super easy for those who play in mobile, where, where mobility is very very limited. So for now, let's go to what would be the standard um, difficulty in Doom, which is ultraviolence, in this case normal, max monsters. Alright, so this is just how you start um, a game with a, with a champion. Now keep in mind that once you start a new game in single player with a specific champion, you cannot change the champion at all until you finish that session, meaning until you finish the entire map set. So uh, that's something that you should keep in mind. Uh, it's basically a big commitment. Now let's look into the options. Um, as you can see it, over here, let's ignore this part that says champions for now, it has a QCD option and all options. All options are the options of the engine itself, um, the, the, all the options that the engine has. Uh, QCD options are some options that we added uh, specifically for, for this mod. So going into that, um, there's GC Doom shortcuts which takes you to some of the important options for GC Doom or in this case Sandronum. Uh, for those who don't know, Sandronum and GC Doom are basically the same engine just with different ways of doing uh, multiplayer. And in this case for, for any uh, all, the, all the games that we're, we'll be hosting and everything, it's through uh, Sandronum. But yeah, if you see GC Doom, we're talking about also Sandronum, just mentioning that. So these are some options, some, some shortcuts to some options that are useful. Please always set adjust sprite clipping to never. This affects how the sprites are rendered on the floor. And if you change it to something else, maybe you can see over here the, the dogs, how they change position as I'm changing this. This will affect um, in, in multiplayer uh, how well the hitbox corresponds to the sprite or the image of the enemy that you're seeing. So you want to have it to never, which is the most accurate one. Um, according to how we set the offsets. Don't worry too much about it, but please set it to never. All the other stuff doesn't matter too much. Um, FPS counter, if you want to have it over there, well, that's the option. Um, now, looking into actually the QCD options, there's three uh, keys that you need to bind, three new keys. One is use active ability. The other one is select starting weapon and champion information. So let's check them out. Use active ability is very simple, as you can see I have my, well I think everybody knows how active abilities work, so let, I, let's just use it and there we go, I use my active ability, that's about it. The second one is um, select starting weapon, now starting weapon you cannot select it at any other moment other than when you start a new game. So as it is right now if I press the key nothing happens because I already started the game. However, let's restart, 
you see the message over there. Press H to change the starting weapon. I can press it and A to select one weapon, D to select the other. So A, I have that weapon already, so it doesn't matter. And now I cannot change it. I'm stuck with this one. Or you can press the other one. Basically, this corresponds to my left and right movement. So whatever you have it bound to in your keyboard, that's what it's going to be displaying instead of A and D. Um, as you see, there's no shotgun. There's only the machine gun and the nail gun. So shotgun is not a starting weapon in single player. Just wanted to mention that. Um, another thing important to this, you can only do this if you haven't moved. For example, right now I haven't moved at all. I can look around, that's no problem. But if I actually move forward, backwards, left, right, that's when it's going to be cancelled. I can still press the key and I can select my weapon, so that's cool, even if the message is not showing up over there. But as soon as I move a little bit, I can no longer pull up the, the, the starting weapon. So this is something that you want to do as soon as you start the game and you can only do it at that point. So uh, that's, that's about it. Now as I was mentioning, um, at this moment, well it doesn't look like, well, let's say I want to start a new game with Caleb. Great, but what does Caleb do? Well that's where the other... Um, the other key comes in, 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 into play, the champion information, I have it to F1. You press F1 and it will give you the information about this specific champion with his abilities, uh, his passive, his active, his uh, body type, in this case where it's a type light, it just means um, that he's a light champion or squishy. Uh, same for example, if you choose, I don't know, some of the big ones, you pull it out, it will give you the... oh, and you see this message, you picked the big champion. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so there it is, it gives you the information about his abilities and all that. Now, that message about a champion is just because uh, big champions are really big and sometimes they won't fit in places where, where the regular Doom player would fit, so it's not recommended in the sense... It's not recommended to, to play single player with these guys unless you are quite aware that at some point you might get stuck and you might have to cheat a little bit to go through. So, and, and it's pretty much the same with the, with the small ones. They're too small and sometimes they fit in places where the Doom guy, the regular Doom guy wouldn't fit. So, yeah, there's that for, for, for a little bit of a warning on, on the champions that you want to choose. The recommended are the, the medium, which by the way, all of these are sorted. This is medium, 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 medium. Light, 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 these are light. Oh, sorry, Galen is medium. Kane to, all the way to Nyx, they're light. And Terminator to Sorgal, they're heavies. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, let's continue with the options. Now the monsters, oh, we weapon binding. This is um, for for whoever wants to have the weapons bind to specific keys rather than the default, which is to the numbers, um, to the number keys. So if you want to have your your rail into a specific key, you can set it up like that. So there is. Just keep in mind that tribalt and rocket launcher, as well as shotgun and super shotgun, are basically in the same slot. So if you bind this thing to, I don't know, 3, you press 3, first it's going to go to Super Shotgun, then it's going to go to Shotgun. So if you want to separate that, you can do it over here, to bind them separately. Now, Monster Set Selection. Uh, the first thing to mention here, this applies only a new game. Uh, you cannot change monsters in the fly in the middle of a game. So if I start with Quake 1 Monsters, as it is right now, and I suddenly decide to change it to Quake 2, but well, monsters are not going to magically change, so you will have to start a whole new game in order for that to take effect. And there it is, Quake 2 Monsters. Um, so you can do this for any any of these, Quake 1, 2, 4, and even the vanilla do monsters. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can mix them up. I would suggest you though, to if you're going to play single player, to just go with one theme at a time so that you can experience each one of them separately because they do have differences in between each other, how some monsters are the behaviors and attacks and all that. So it's interesting to play like that, but if you want, you can even mix them up all together and it doesn't matter, you're allowed to do that. Um, remember right now it only shows the big monsters. There it is. Weird mix up. Um, all right. So, uh, in multiplayer, the server size. This means that if you're joining a server, a co-op server, um, it, the, the server is the one who has already set up the monsters. You cannot choose the monsters once you join the server. Uh, now the QCD options, there is a, a player's slider speed, the default is 85, uh, this, that's the best speed, 85% I mean to what the original Doom speed is. Um, so 85% is the, the one that we found to be the most fair, because Doom is incredibly fast and for deathmatch that's a little too much. Um, it's very difficult to hit your targets, particularly with the type of weapon balance that we have. 
so we set it up to 85 as the default but at any point in single player you can change it um, to whatever you wish but as it says over here it applies a new map so this means either when you start a new game or when you reach a new map which is what I'm gonna show right now I reach a new map and now the speed it has applied and I'm ridiculously fast now but again the the, the, the speed and it can go anywhere from 70% to 130% of them. The recommended one is 85, and that's what we're going to be toasting, so keep that in mind. Um, in multiplayer, server decide just exactly like the monster set. And yeah, that's that's about it, about the speed. Now, you can also, as you can see over here, there's crosser, stack, crosser tags. Over here you can see the crosser. So there's the, the usual Sea Doom or Sand Random ones. And then I added these ones from Quake 3 and some from Quake 4. So you can choose whichever you prefer. You can change the color of the of the crosser and all that, but that's a little more advanced. You have to go into all options and you'll leave it in heads up display. And here it is default crosser. You can change the the color, health and health just means that. Uh, but the, the, the crosser is gonna be changing color according to your health level. Um, Alright, so let's continue with the options. A speedometer and weapon bar. Okay, let's turn both of these to one. Let's start a new game. Um, you can see the speedometer right there, a number changing, it just shows you how fast you are. The weapon bar is the one at the right where it shows the weapons and the ammunition that you have. You can change this at any point in the in the level, in any level. And it takes just a couple seconds, a second or two seconds to activate or deactivate. So you can see I'll activate them again. And there they are. So not too much to know about it, it's just if you want them or not on the screen. Uh, speedometer might affect a little bit performance in super low end devices, so you may want to turn that off if you're running this game in a potato. Um, weapon hit beeps, it's uh, well, what it says. When you hit a, a monster, let me show you with the nail, and it's a little easier to hear. You can hear the beeps when I'm hitting the monsters. You can turn this off uh, so that you don't get that. Uh, again, it will take a second to activate, but there it is. Number bits. Alright. Uh, Tauntaun success. Sometimes when you kill monsters, uh, your player, your character is gonna say some some phrase up there. I will see if I can get Sorgul to say anything. Um, it, it's not very common. It's not incredibly common, and that's on purpose. Precisely so that it doesn't get super annoying. Apparently Sorgul doesn't wanna say anything. Um, but yeah. Right now I'm doing it manually, because you can taunt with a specific key, uh, the taunt key in, in the synonym options. Um, but that's pretty much what it would look like. You kill something, and it would say something like that by itself rather than you pressing it. But if you don't like it, if you think it's too annoying and you don't want to be hearing all that, you can just completely turn it off. I always have it on just for fun. Uh, damage numbers, again this is the dictated by the server, in this case in single player you're the server, so you decide. Um, it's just the numbers that appear on top of the head of monsters when you when you damage them. It takes a little bit to <coughs> excuse me to activate or deactivate. There it is. Inactive. You can no longer see the damage numbers. And you can turn them on again. So there we go. It's four if you want them or if you don't want them. Now auto open loot box. What are loot boxes in this game? They're nothing like a loot box in let's say Quick Champions or any other game actually that has loot boxes. Uh, loot boxes over here you get them by finishing a level uh, in single player or in co-op by and killing all the monsters and finding every single secret in the level. As you can see on the top it says that I've killed 20 out of 27 monsters and then I have found 3 out of 5 secrets. So let me just... See, that wasn't me, that was an autoton. So if you don't want that happening you can turn that off. So yeah, uh, let me just finish the level to 100% at least in regards to monsters. Did I already get this? Yeah, I did. Um, so yeah, the loot boxes, what they do, again, they're only in single player and co-op, nothing. What am I missing? I'm missing. Oh, one monster at the exit. Hold on, I'll show you right now. There it is. I got a backpack, and it opened right away, and I got 10% ammo refill. Um, yeah, the loot boxes. Oh, and these guys, once you kill a zombie, uh, they come back to life, but they come gray, and at this point they don't count for the kill count. Um, Alright, 
So the loot boxes, what they do, it's basically, as you saw, they give you a little bit of a reward. They can be a really crappy reward, like 10% ammo, or they can be pretty good rewards. It, uh, the, the loot boxes can be a backpack, um, what is it? A backpack, a, a chest, or a reliquary. They're basically the, the common and common and rare type of backpacks, or loot boxes, I'm sorry. And uh, they contain different types of, of, of rewards. Now, again, this is only for single player and co-op. The type of rewards are going to be only for this session that you're playing. There's nothing like unlocking this thing that is going to be available for every single game after that. No, there's no such thing in this engine. So instead, the, 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 the loot boxes only give you temporary or, or very... Um, uh, they give you rewards that only apply in this, this particular session. So I'm starting a new game to show you what would happen if I have the O2 open loot box off. Um, and while I do that... Uh, I should probably mention that there's not gonna be anything in this mod like skins, or weapon skins, player skins and things like that. Uh, that's just a lot of work that would not really pay off. Uh, editing a 3D model is hard work, but editing um, sprites, it's, it's also a lot of work in a different way. In a model you just put a hat on it and that's it. In a sprite set you have to basically duplicate, duplicate the sprite set to have a, a just a hat and things like that so it would be really really troublesome and it's not really worth it the amount of time we, ha we would have to spend to make one single skin for one single character would be ridiculous and to be fair we're really focusing only on on, on the gameplay aspect of this thing not so much on aesthetics or, or any anything like that besides we're not big fans of loot boxes anyway so okay what am i missing enemies killed oh yeah and the last secret here we go Alright, oh wow, I got a reliquary, but now it didn't auto-open. As you can see under my character portrait, there it, there it is, the, 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 the reliquary that I have, so I have to press the key that I have found to use. And there we go, opening it, and I got a delay quad damage. This means that uh, by the time I reach the next map, I'm gonna get a free quad damage. There we go, and I can start messing people up. Alright, so moving on. Cooperative markers. Um, this applies mostly in co-op games, but also I can show it with Menelker, which is, by the way, one of the classes that I have never shown, so let's call this a review. Um, as you can see, his active ability, Dark Servant, summons a servant to fight your enemies. Anybody that has played Hexen knows what this is about. So there it is, the almighty Dark Servant. Alright, so I wanted to show this because cooperative markers, what they do is they show a little triangle on top of, of the of your um, allies. So, for example, in here you can see it over there. This this works to recognize who's your friend and who isn't. Uh, but again, this only works in in single player for this guy. This is the only moment it, it matters. Or in cooperative, uh, the, of course, for your allies, the other players. This is does this does not work in deathmatch because this thing would give away positions of many things. So it's not really a good idea. So again, only in single player. For this guy and in co op for your allies. Low ammo warning. Whenever your weapon is running low on ammunition, you can have a warning. You heard it right there, it was a click. So you can com turn this off completely, there will be no no warnings. You can have sound and text, which is going to be a, literally a little text showing below ammunition. And the last option is sound and text stays, which means that the this text is just gonna stay there forever. Uh, this is useful, particularly in Deathmatch. Oh, did I? Hmm. Okay, that's a little bit of a bug. We're fixing that. <laughs> Great showcase, of course. The text is supposed to stay there forever. It didn't right now, but it should. Um, again, this would be good in Deathmatch, where where you need to be aware of your um, of your ammo at all points. There we go. It's just sticking now. No, it's not. Oh well, we'll fix that. Don't worry. By the time they release, this will be fixed. So yeah, you can have that on or off, however you prefer. Inquisitor Trust Tap in Ticks. Now this is uh, basically an um, um, accessibility option for the Inquisitor. He has this ability, at, uh, Trust Touch. Double tap tap, double tapping a direction will boost the movement. That means double tap backwards, or left, or right, or whatever, will trust you in that direction. Now, this option over here is precisely to change how, how, what's the threshold for it to activate, for example. And this is counted, each one of these, um, this is represented in ticks, which is 135th of a second. 
So if I set it to 35, it means that if I press the key once and within a second I press it again, it will activate. You can hear by my keyboard how slow that is. Um, that is for people that can't or don't want to tap super fast. Um, the default is 15, but you can make it also uh, lower so that you have to tap faster. There we go. And for people that don't like it at all, you can just set it to the very minimum, which is one tick. That's basically impossible to trigger because I know that some people don't like this type of abilities because it can mess up their movement. So there is that. The default is 15. You can set it up to whichever you prefer. Now, all of these options that don't have a specific information on when it triggers, like in here, server decides, server decides, and server, it means that all the other ones you can change whenever you prefer, whether you are player single player or you have joined the server. So that's what, what is called a client-side option. Um, so that's it for the, the options of, uh, of this thing. Again, this menu of champions only comes into play when you're joining another game, uh, a server, be that uh, co-op or deathmatch, and I will show that in a second. But before I do that, I want to show a little bit of how to play single, basically single player against bots, to do some fragging against bots. Um, this is for whenever you want to play offline, or you just want a little bit of practice and you don't have the time, or you don't even have connection to play against other people. So let's, let's jump into that right now. Alright, I have loaded up a map set for deathmatch maps, which is A and DM. This is a map set uh, that has 33 maps. I really recommend this map set. Um, there might be a little surprise about that, that I'll announce pretty soon. But anyway, um, alright, so as you can see right now, I'm still playing single player. The, what you need to do in order to start playing deathmatch against bots, the, first, the very first thing is tell the engine that you want to play deathmatch. For that, go to the console by pressing tilde, or whatever that thing is called, uh, to the left on the number one, um, and type QCDE underscore FFA, which stands for Free For All. This will tell the engine that you want to play this mode, it will set up all the, the, the settings um, to play it in the best possible way, to be the closest to Quake, which is uh, the enemy drops the weapons, the, the, the weapons respawn after a while, the ones on the floor, um, things like that. So now. Uh, what you need to do after setting that up is going to, a, to the map, um, to the deathmatch map. In this case, you go again to the console, go map Aeon01, this is the name of the map. And here we go, we're in deathmatch right now. You can tell that this is deathmatch because the weapons are solid in the color. The color is completely solid rather than being uh, green and gray as they usually are in single player and they're bobbing. Um, Alright, but still, there's nobody to fight. You need to add bots. Um, one thing that you might want to know is usually there's the bots start as at a specific skill. You can check that out by um, bot skill tells me that is two a skill uh, bot skill is two, which is like medium bots. You can keep that as medium. You can make them easier. You can make them harder. I I particularly like to make them a little harder. I go with bot skill three. It says that it will ch be changed for the next game, so you have to change map again. Again, you don't need to change this, but it's just in case you you want. Um, so let's add a, uh, a couple of bots. You can add any of the bots of the rosters. Um, so you just go add bot, for example, Sorgo. Oh, if I type it right, of course. Sorgo, there we go. Sorgo, add bot, Kane, add, uh, Jesus, add bot, Kane, add bot, uh, Ranger. And there we go, we have a couple of bots to fight against. So uh, the bots come. These bots are basically a, a mixture in between the original bots on the engine and some enhancement that we did. Uh, because we could not call code bots from scratch, so we had to use the one in the engine. Uh, they can be a little dumb sometimes, and they get stuck, they stop moving sometimes completely, they just stay in one place. You shoot them a little bit and they will react. Uh, why did this happen? I don't know. I think it had to do with the 3D floors, but still, there's nothing we can do to fix that. So you will just have to live with that. Like, right there, I think that guy just froze up. Yeah, there it is, he's frozen. You shoot them a little bit, get close, and there we are. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of a little dumb on, on that sense, but still, uh, they're really good to fight against, to learn the weapons, to learn the abilities, and they do use abilities too. Like, right there, Sorgul. Uh, okay, Sorgul just kicked my ass. Um, oh shit, oh shit. No, you don't. There we go. So again, they're really good to fight against, just to practice your aim, to practice the abilities, um, understand how the mechanics work in the, in the maps. So yeah, there there is that. And 
Oh, but at this point we're playing basically an unlimited deathmatch. You know, there's no time limit, there's no frag limit, so you have to set that on the on the console too. Literally, time limit, it's zero right now, so let's make it to three. That's three minutes. And then frag limit to, I don't know, ten. So either when we reach ten frags or three minutes pass, this will end and we will move to the next map. So yeah, basically that's it for, for playing against bots. It's really, really easy. All you have to do is load the map set, set up a couple of things on the console, and that's it. Um, we tried to make it as simple as possible by by grouping up all the settings into, into just typing a couple of things and that's it. Otherwise, you would have to type a lot of things in order to get it working like this. So yeah, we really tried to make it simple. And here it is. It's a little... He's a little dumb, but you know, he tries. Um, if you make the bots harder, what they do, uh, it's uh, they improve their aim a lot. They basically become aim bots if you set it up the way to the highest, which is 5. Bot skill 5 or 4, I don't remember, one of those. Two. So, yeah, that's that's the only, the only difference in there. Uh, the bots are also good for... Uh, let's actually show it. Um, QCDE TDM. This is Team Deathmatch, so let's go to another map. Map and zero 2 And we will be playing TDM. So you you can join, uh, let's say, Galen. This did not apply. Uh, this happens sometimes for some reason. As you can see, I joined and for some reason I'm not Galen, despite me. This is a bug of the engine, so I can just, whenever I respond, I'm gonna be Galen. Now you can also change, by the way, over here with this thing, champions, you select next, and next time that you die, right now I'm killing myself, but you know, if I died, I would respawn as next. Now this place is completely empty, you want to play against bots in teams, you just go, add bot, sword, gold, red, add bot, king, red, add bot, uh, who, I don't know, uh, ranger, blue, which is my team, and there we go, now it's a 2v2. You can add as many bots as you want, and there we go, you're playing Team Deathmatch. And actually here's where it would come useful to have the... Um, where is it? Cooperative markers, because this way you will know who is your friend and who is it. Ah, Jesus, leave me alone. And that's why you have to use the... There is a marker, so that's my ally. Indeed, we just did this too. Ooh. We just did this to, to make it more easy to, to see who's your friend and who isn't. Um, Alright, so that's it for bots. You can you can really play other modes with bots. Duel, they're really dumb. They don't know how to go for items and time items or anything like that, so it doesn't really make any sense. And trying something like capture the flag, it's completely, completely pointless. So don't even try. Um, it really Bots really work only for free for all or for team deathmatch. That's about it. Alright, now I'll show you a little bit of um, what happens when you join a server, let's say a deathmatch server that somebody else set up, and what you can change and what you can't change. Okay, so right now I have joined a server, um, so that means that right now I am just a client, I cannot make any changes to the server settings. Let's join the game. Um, you just press the space as it says down there, and... Oh, actually, uh, you can see the help thing and all that if you need that. Um, so let's go with Galen. And there we go. I am Galen and now I'm in, into the game itself. Now let's say that, just for the sake of showing you these options, and I go like, oh, but I feel too slow. Well, I want to change my speed. Well, guess what? You can't. You really can't because as it says over here, multiplayer the server decides. So you cannot change this at all. Uh, net, neither you could change this if it was co-op, you can change the damage number, but still you can change other things like if I still want my speedometer, well I can still have my speedometer. So again, anything that it doesn't specify that is a server setting, uh, you can change it on the fly and it will apply. Um, so that, there is that and that's about it. Uh, for how to join servers, how to set up servers, well let's go with the first one. How to join servers, that will be easy, whenever you install Sandrinum, it, it will be bundled with something called Doomseeker. That's basically a server uh, explorer, you will be able to see servers for many, 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 many Doom mods. You just have to look for the ones that are for QCD, and you just join, that's about it, no big deal. As for how to set up a server, that's a little more complicated, and um, we have added a guide for it. 
not exactly a guide, more like uh, some stuff that people that set servers need to know. Um, unfortunately, I'm not too well versed on it because my route router doesn't allow me to set up server despite trying very hard for a very long time. Um, so I don't have the most experience with that. Michael is the one who actually knows all this stuff. But for now, let's just leave it at probably people that who that will want to set up server know how to do it already. And if not, um, we'll we'll try to help you. Uh, this is a good moment, by the way, to plug in our like a shameless plug, our Discord channel. I'm trying to kill this setup, but he just doesn't. Ah, Jesus, he killed himself. Um, our Discord Discord server. We have a Discord server where you can join and ask anything about anything related QCDE or even other mods that we have worked on. Um, and we're pretty much always around over there, so so you can reach us. We have a, a lot of help helpful people over there. So the link is going to be under in the description. Uh, so check that out. Feel free to join. And um, yeah, and it's not only for help. You can just chill out over there and talk with people and whatnot. Um, all right, so that's about it. That's what I wanted to show in, in regards to this. Probably I forgot something very important that I wanted to talk about. Jesus Christ, that you're a pain in the ass. I probably forgot something important I wanted to tell. If that's the case, I may remember later. Or not. Who knows? So... Yeah, that's about it. I hope that you will be playing this thing when it comes out. We will meet on as many players as possible. Because, you know, let's let's have fun killing each other. Why not? All right. So that's it for me right now. Uh, I might post another little update like this. I know this is very long. A lot of people will be bored. But I, I do hope that some people find this interesting to know a little bit about how to do this thing. And um, yeah. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in whatever I record next. Until then... Later.